G'day and welcome to another episode of Tech Adept Crafts. My name is Anthony and today we are looking at a number of different combinations of Kickstarters and various campaigns from Ian Lovecraft. We're not doing a review, but this is how to put them together. This piece is one that uh, I've had a huge amount of fun with. It combines four different Lovecraft campaigns. We have the Fountain comes from the recent Tale of Two Cities. Uh, I had the very great pleasure of uh, test printing this one and it was an amazing piece. I, I looked at it and just went, yeah, really want to do that one. The wall and the gate system here all comes from the frost. The tree comes from Feywood. And down inside the fountain, there are some lily pads which come from Asian adventures. I, I think the, the, the pieces have so much character, so much detail, that they almost tell the story themselves. But uh, I give a little, little nudge on this time and just put a few things together. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the tutorial and uh, hopefully you'll see how you can combine a lot of the various different pieces from the Lovecraft Kickstarters and campaigns, uh, most of which are available over on my mini factory. I'll put a link in the description. Don't forget, if you would like to support the channel, make sure that you hit that like, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. But if you'd like to really support the channel, you can also jump on over to Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash techadeptcrafts and you can become one of the, the latest crafters supporting me over there on Patreon, either throw a coin to the bard, the hobby goodness, or maybe become one of the full tacklers. You'll get access to amazing scenery each month designed by Ian Lovecraft. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the video and uh, I'll see you briefly at the end. Cheers. I've given it a prime of first a black, then a white, so doing a zenithal highlighting, and then I'm going to base coat it with a mid gray. This is just a blend of white and black paint. That's it. This goes over all of the stonework. The base of the printer has been printed on an old Creality Cocoon 3D printer. There was some mild warping, um, but I've been able to fix that up mainly. The statue was printed on a Photon Mono resin printer. Now I'm adding leaf green in very watered down amounts around the edges in the, uh, on the inside of the fountain. This is to represent the, the slime and the sludge that might build up within the fountain. And then mixing that with aqua and soft moss, just various different shades of blues and greens, just all in random dabs all through the base of this fountain. I am planning to put resin effects on this later, but I thought, look, it'll be a good thing to have some variation of colors showing through. I'm now adding a raw sienna to this. That goes, again, into the base of the fountain. But once I've done that, I'm actually painting random bricks around that stonework. This gives a variation of color for this stone as just a plain gray was gonna be really, really boring. I go back later and add burnt sienna in the same fashion to that stonework, just to give variation. I then go and continue that on with these wall pieces, which come from Ian Lovecraft's The Frost Campaign, whereas the fountain comes from the Tale of Two Cities. I'd like to take a moment now to thank all of my Patreon subscribers. All the people there at The Hobby Goodness, your support is greatly appreciated and I couldn't continue this channel without your support. But I'd like to pay particular attention to the people at The Full Tackle. Andreas Rocco, David Bennett, David Skaberis, Dwayne C. Israelson, Jean Maguire, Joel Cunningham, Judy Hayes, Kevin Goodrich, Christina B., Lopiana, Night Lurker, Riri, Sean McKinley and Toggers. Thank you guys, your support is so greatly appreciated. Going back now to the leaf green, I'm starting on the tree canopy. This comes from an Ian Lovecraft's Feywood campaign. You'll notice I'm using a lot of different pieces from various campaigns here, because I think one of the great things about Ian's pieces are you can mix and match and bring pieces together from a lot of different campaigns. 
So I've done this xenophil highlighting again on the tree canopy and I'm watering down that leaf green so you'll see lots of shadow and light coming through in that canopy and I think that's worked really, really well. Going back now over the wall with that same randomized brick, ta uh, brick patterning uh, and I do this on the statue as well but instead of picking out bricks I'm just doing spots of that color both with the raw sienna and with the burnt sienna. Now taking a light grey and I'm going over a number of different parts within the model, the base of the statue, uh, the iconography that you'll find on the gate piece uh, and several layers of bricks around both the tops of the walls uh, and the, the base of the walls and uh, around the outside of the fountain. I had a number of issues with forgetting to either charge the battery for the camera or not waiting long enough as it turned on before I pressed record. So there's a few missing steps. One of them is painting the soft moss around the rim of the fountain, which I think actually gave a really nice effect. These little gargoyles are resin printed as well, and they also come from the graveyard wall set that all of the wall pieces come from, from the Frost campaign. You can see there the difference between these two corner pieces. The one on the left was actually printed on the old Creality Cocoon, whereas the one on the right was printed on my Ender 3. And I'm sure that you can tell the quality is a lot better. I paint them with a grey and then dry brush with a light grey and I give it a very light dusting later with titanium. I do the same sort of technique with the, uh, with the stonework of the statue, but I don't add the titanium to that one. I just do that light gray. Again, light gray over that soft moss. This wonderful yellow oxide makes a great dry brushing color over the top of the green canopy. It gives a variation to color and it shows a lot of light on that green and blends well over the whiter wash that was on there beforehand. I also add that dry brushing into the fountain. Let's start gluing pieces together. I'm using super glue in this because it does bond very quickly and very easily. We're going to start painting the iron work. This metallic silver by Lenny's is a little too translucent for my liking so I did add some black paint to that just as a base coating. It came up with a really nice wrought iron feel which I dry brushed over with that silver later. The right angles on the cutting mat make a great way to get this straight. Now to stop the haters on 3D printing as not being a craft, we are going to cut out some cereal box card with my rotary hole punch and use that to make coins in the base of the fountain. I stick them down with super glue because it's a lot faster and just start sticking coins in there like random as if they'd been, I don't know, thrown into a fountain. To get the tree to fit flush against the base of the fountain, I have cut a little portion of it off, and that'll just help it to look like as if it's grown up around there. I'm gonna have to deal with that more soon. Using a Baltazar Gold and then a Gehenna Gold dry brush, I go over the coins, or at least probably two thirds of the coins. Well, you know, people who want to throw a better coin there to get a better wish. And then the other ones, I go back with that um, wrought iron and then the silver for some silver coins. I don't want to go crazy and put a whole stack of different types of coins in there. Just, you know, I've got some gold coins, got some silver coins. Just what people can afford, really. Time to start washing. I'm nearly out of my brown wash, so I do make a new one in the middle of this project. But I go over with that brown wash around all of the stonework, but not over the base of the fountain, the inside base of the fountain. But all of the other stonework I go over with that brown wash, uh, including the tree, including the walls, uh, including the gate piece, all of it gets this brown wash.
Right, now to tackle that wobble. Now you know that this hairdryer is not mine, that's obvious, but just using a plain hairdryer, you can heat that PLA to the point where it becomes pliable, and then just hold it down. I did that on two corners, and afterwards there was no wobble. Easy done. It took about five, 10 minutes. So rather than throw away a piece if it's got a little bit of a little bit of a warp into it, you might be able to fix it. We're on the homo stretch for painting now. Dry brushing that light gray over pretty much everything that's stonework. It also goes over the tree trunk and the statue. Unbleached Titanium by Liquitex. This is one of my new favorite colors. I dry brush over the tree trunk, over the top of the gray to give variety, and then over the stonework around the rim of the fountain, which had the soft moss color, then a dry brush of gray, and now this Unbleached Titanium. All those varieties of color just help to show little subtle variations to the stonework, to the tree trunk, to the, the paving stones, all sorts of variety just draws your eye every time you look at it in a different way you see something slightly different i do it also over the dirt around the tree but uh, that's going to get a bit of a covering in a moment this leaf green was a mistake. It's too dark for what I wanted to use it for, and I put out way too much, but that's okay. I did go and use that to paint a number of other projects, a number of other projects with the leftover green paint. But anyway, so I, I start sticking everything down now, and that green is gonna be the base for flocking later. Uh, super glue helps to get these done really quick and then move on. I went through several tubs of super glue to get all of this down, but that's okay. It got it down really, really fast. Now to start with all of the foliage, and I have taken out a collection of various different foliage. I think there was only way one pack that I didn't end up using, or two packs that I didn't end up using. And to start with, I'm using this broom bristle that I bought from Bunnings many, many years ago. I just cut lengths of it, use super glue to hold them together, and then stick them into the grooves. Those grooves are being used to help hold them in place. And they're essentially just long tufts of grass. For the flock and other bits and pieces, I'm using PVA glue. And I can thoroughly recommend, don't try to spread it around with a skewer. It's like bailing water out of a boat with a spoon. Uh, just a pack of pebbles and they just go straight on. I'm not coloring them. I'm not painting them at all They are just pebbles going in there as stones in the corner. I'm using a fine granular flock Which I think is a GW flock uh, For the paths and then the more common static grass for the rest of the grass around the corners There are also bits and pieces of moss that I use and other uh, lichen and foliage just to represent the various different clumps of foliage that you'll find there. And then these army painter tufts of grass, I'm using super glue to affix them in just a couple of little spots on the paving stone. This liquid gloss resin, yeah, I really haven't used it very much. I think this is only about the second time I've used it. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful product, only I think I needed to have put a layer down in the in the fountain first of Mod Podge before I painted it because as this was settling, it did seep into the base of the fountain. Now all I did was add a little dab of aquamarine or an aqua color into that mix um, and it goes over beautifully. Once I poured that in, it was time to stick the statue in. That's pretty much all of the pieces put together. 
But as the resin was drying, I decided to put in these little lily pads, which are from the Asian Adventures pack by Ian, and they really set it off, just using some simple greens on the actual lilies and then some pinks and white for the flowers. There you have it guys, the tutorial on how to paint a fountain, put some water effects and combine some different ideas together from various campaigns. We might find a collection of different pieces on, on things like Thingiverse or Colts 3D. It doesn't necessarily have to be from one particular designer. You could combine pieces from lots of designers. I, I just think Ian's work is superlative, so I've just combined several. In the photos that will follow, you may also notice there's a little horse and cart. The horse and cart comes from the frost, but the driver, he comes from the Viking legends. So there's five different campaigns. I hope that you enjoy that and I will uh, see you in the next video. One last shout out, this t-shirt and uh, this lovely, lovely mask uh, has arrived in the mail for me today. It's, it's not a sponsorship, this is something that I have purchased from Dungeon Dragons. I follow them on Instagram uh, and this was, uh, I bought that to help them. They are going through some tough times at the moment. I'll also put a link down there to their Instagram account and if you would like to get some really cool merchandise, make sure that you check out their, their web store there and give them some support over there. Anyway, until the next time, guys, keep hobbying.